Casimir Pulaski was born on March 6, 1745 in the manor house of the Pulaski family in Warsaw, Poland. The Pulaski family was Roman Catholic and early in his youth, Casimir Pulaski attended an elite college run by Theatines, a male religious order of the Catholic Church in Warsaw, but he did not finish his education. In 1762, Pulaski started his military career as a page of Karl Christian Joseph of Saxony, Duke of Courland, and vassal of the Polish king. He spent six months at the ducal court of Metia, during which the court was interred in the palaces by the Russian forces occupying the area. With his family, he took part in the 1764 election of the new Polish monarch, Stanislaw August II. In December of 1767, Pulaski and his father became involved with the Bar Confederation, which saw King Stanislaw as a Russian puppet and sought to curtail Russian hegemony over the Commonwealth. The Confederation was actively opposed by the Russian forces stationed in Poland. Casimir recruited a unit and on February 29th, 1768, signed the Act of the Confederation, thus declaring himself an official supporter of the movement. On March 6th, he received the rank of Pukonvenik and commanded a Chorgu of cavalry. He fought his first battle on April 20th near Pohorel. It was a victory, as was another on April 23rd near Starokostadientiv. An engagement at Kazanakwa on April 28th resulted in a defeat. In early May, he garrisoned Chmanlik, but was forced to retreat when Allied forces were defeated. He retreated to a monastery, which he defended during a siege by royalist forces for over two weeks until June 16th. Eventually, he was forced to surrender and was taken captive by the Russians. On June 28th, he was released in exchange for a pledge that he would not again take up arms with the Confederates and that he would lobby the Confederates to end the hostilities. However, Pulaski considered the pledge to be non-binding and made a public declaration to the effect upon reaching a camp of the Confederates at the end of July. Agreeing to the pledge in the first place weakened his authority and popularity among the Confederates and his own father considered whether or not he should be court-martialed. In 1768, Pulaski's unit was again besieged by numerical superior forces. However, after a staunch defense, he was able to break the Russian siege. On April 7th, he was made the Regimentsar of the Krakowa Wojtyship. In May and June, he operated near Przemysl, but failed to take the town. Criticized by some of his fellow Confederates, Pulaski departed for Lithuania with his allies and a force of about 600 men on June 3rd. Their Pulaski, he was able to assemble a 4,000 strong army and deliver it back to a Confederate staging point. This excursion received international notice and gained him a reputation as the most effective military leader in the Bar Confederation. In February of 1770, Pulaski moved near Towitarg, based in Izbai. He subsequently operated in southern Lesser Poland, and on May 13th, his force was defeated at the Battle of Debrunzen. Around June 9th and 10th, in Presov, in a conference with other Confederate leaders, he met Joseph II, Holy Roman Emperor, who complimented Pulaski on his actions. On June 3rd and 4th, Pulaski's camp was captured by Johann von Druitz, and he was forced to retreat into Austria. Early in August, he met with the French emissary, Charles Francis Dumeres. He disregarded an order to take La Caromana, and instead cooperated with Mikhail Waleski in a raid on Krakow on the night of August the 31st. He then departed for he then departed for Chistashua on September 10th along with along with Walaski. He used subterfuge to take control of the the Jasna Gura Monastery. On September 18th, he met wife of Charles of Saxony, Duke of Courland. He impressed her and she would become one of his protectors. Around September 22nd to 24th, Walaski was made the commandant of Jasna Gura, which slighted Pulaski. Nevertheless, he continued as the de facto commando of Confederate troops stationed in and around Jasnakura. Between September 10, 1770 and January 14, 1771, Pulaski, Walaski, and Josef Zaremba commanded the Polish forces during the siege of Jasnakura Monastery. They successfully defended against Druids in a series of engagements, the largest one on November 11th, followed by a siege from December 31st to January 14th. The defense of Jasna Gura further enhanced his reputation among the Confederates and abroad. In February 1771, Pulaski operated around Lublin. On February 25th, he was victorious at Trulu, and on the night of February 28th and March 1st, his forces besieged Krasnik. In March that year, he became one of the members of the Confederates' War Council. 
One military advisor of the Confederates at the time described him as spontaneous, more proud than ambitious, friend of the Prince of Courland, enemy of the Pataki family, brave and honest, as well as popular among other commanders. Furthermore, he enjoyed fighting against the Russians above everything else. In May 1771, Pulaski advanced on Zamosk, refusing to coordinate an operation with Dumerez against Alexander Savarov. Without Pulaski's support, the Confederates were defeated at the Battle of Lankarana. Pulaski's forces were victorious at the Battle of Majdani and briefly besieged Zamosk. But it was relieved by Savarov. On July 27th, he declared he would, from then on, strictly adhere to orders from the Confederacy. In October, his responsibilities in the War Council had increased. And that same month, he became involved with a plan to kidnap King Poniatowski. Pulaski was initially opposed to this plan, but later supported it on the condition that the king would not be harmed. The attempt failed, weakening the international reputation of the Confederate bar, and when Pulaski's involvement with the attempted kidnapping became known, the Austrians expelled him from their territories. He spent the following winter and spring in Chistachua. During this time, several of his followers were defeated, captured, or killed. On May 31st, 1772, Pulaski left the Jasnagura Monastery and went to Silesia in Prussia. In the meantime, the Bar Confederation was defeated, with most of the fighting ending around the summer. Overall, Pulaski was seen as one of the most famous and accomplished Confederate leaders. Leaving Prussia, Pulaski sought refuge in France, where he unsuccessfully attempted to join the French army. Around that time, he was recruited by Marcus de Lafayette and Benjamin Franklin for service in the American Revolutionary War. Franklin was impressed by Pulaski, and he subsequently recommended that General George Washington accept Pulaski as a volunteer in the Continental Army Cavalry. On August 20th, he met General George Washington in his headquarters at Neshaminy Falls outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He argued for the superiority of cavalry over infantry. Because Washington was unable to grant him an officer rank, Pulaski spent the next few months traveling between Washington's camp and the U.S. Congress in Philadelphia. His first military engagement against the British occurred before he received it on September 11, 1777, at the Battle of Brandywine. When the Continental Army troops began to yield, he reconnected with Washington's bodyguard of about 30 men and reported that the enemy were endeavoring to cut off the line of retreat. General Washington ordered him to collect as many as possible and employ them according to his discretion to secure the retreat of the army. His subsequent charge averted a disastrous defeat of the Continental Army Cavalry, earning him fame in America and saved the life of General George Washington. As a result, on September 15, 1777, Washington made Pulaski a Brigadier General in the Continental Army Cavalry. At that point, the cavalry was only a few hundred men organized into four regiments. These men were scattered among numerous infantry formations and used primarily for scouting duties. Pulaski immediately began to work on reforming the cavalry. In turn, he focused on reorganizing the cavalry force, mostly stationed in Trenton, New Jersey. While at Trenton, his assistance was requested by General Anthony Wayne. Wayne was in danger of encountering a much larger British force sent to oppose his movements. Pulaski and 50 cavalry rode south to Burlington, New Jersey, where they skirmished with British sentries on February 28th. After this minor encounter, the British commander, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Sterling, was apparently convinced that he was facing a much larger force than expected and prepared to withdraw his forces across the Delaware River into Pennsylvania at Cooper's Ferry. Pulaski and Wayne joined forces to attack Sterling's position on February 29th while he awaited suitable weather conditions to cross. In the resulting skirmish, Pulaski's horse was shot out from under him and a few of his cavalry were wounded. Pulaski went to Yorktown, Virginia, where he met with General Horatio Gates, and suggested the creation of a new unit. At Gates' recommendation, Congress confirmed his previous appointment to the rank of Brigadier General with the special title of Commander of the Horse, and authorized the formation of a corps of 68 Lancers and 200 Life Infantry. This corps, which became known as the Pulaski Cavalry Legion, was recruited mainly in Baltimore, Maryland, where it was headquartered. By August 1778, it numbered about 330 men, both Americans and foreigners. In the autumn, Pulaski was ordered to Little Egg Harbor in New Jersey, where in the engagement of October 15th, known as the Affair at Little Egg Harbor, the Legion suffered heavy losses. During the following winter, Pulaski was stationed at Minisink, at that time in New Jersey, ordered to take part in a punitive Sullivan expedition against the Iroquois. He was 
dissatisfied with this command and intended to leave the service and return to Europe, but instead asked to be reassigned to the Southern Front. On February 2nd, 1779, General Washington ordered him to South Carolina. Pulaski arrived in Charleston, South Carolina on May 8, 1779, finding the city in crisis. General Benjamin Lincoln, commander of the Southern Army, had led most of the army towards Augusta, Georgia, in a bid to recapture Savannah, Georgia, which had been captured by the British in late 1778. The British commander, Brigadier General Augustine Prevost, responded to Lincoln's move by launching a raiding expedition from Savannah across the Savannah River. The South Carolina militia fell back before the British advance, and Prevost's force followed them all the way to Charleston. Pulaski arrived just as military leaders were establishing the city's defenses. When the British advanced on May 11th, Pulaski's legion engaged forward elements of the British force and was badly mauled in the encounter. The Legion's infantry numbered only about 60 men before the skirmish, was virtually wiped out, and Pulaski was forced to retreat to the safety of the city's guns. Although Pulaski frequently suffered from malaria while stationed in Charleston, he remained in active service. At the beginning of September, Lincoln prepared to launch an attempt to retake Savannah with French assistance. Pulaski was ordered to Augusta, where he was to join forces with, with General Lachlan McIntosh. Their combined forces were to serve as the forward elements of Lincoln's army. Pulaski captured a British outpost near Ajichi River. His units then acted as an advance guard for the Allied French units under Admiral Charles Hector, Comte de Esteng. He rendered great services during the siege of Savannah, and in the assault of October 9th, commanded the whole cavalry, both French and American. While attempting to rally fleeing French forces during a cavalry charge, Pulaski was mortally wounded by grape shot. A wounded Pulaski was carried from the field of battle and taken aboard the South Carolina merchant brig Privateer Wasp, where he died two days later. The historical accounts for Pulaski's time and place of burial vary considerably. However, the date of his death is agreed as October 11th, 1779. He was 34 years old when he died. In March 1825, during his grand tour of the United States, General Lafayette personally laid the corner store for Casimir Pulaski Monument in Savannah, Georgia. The United States has long commemorated Pulaski's contributions to the American Revolutionary War. In 1929, Congress passed another resolution, this one recognizing October 11th of each year as General Pulaski Memorial Day. Several towns and counties in the United States of America are named after him as are numerous streets, parks, and structures, such as the Pulaski Skyway in Jersey City, New Jersey. There is also Fort Pulaski, which was active during the American Civil War, and a statue commemorating Pulaski stands at the eastern end of Freedom Plaza in Washington, D.C.